Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Temple. Of course, uh, very quickly, I can see the trading floor from here. And where we are right now in terms of today's trading day is that the oil share index is slightly down from where we finished off yesterday. That's a little bit uh, offside for now. We're doing less than 3.3 million, about 3.3 million in terms of total share transactions so far. It was still within the first one hour of the market opening. That's for about 70.7 .7 million naira. And I can see the electronic board out there, the oil uh, the share index reading 33,000. 433.68, that's slightly lower than 33,449.17 where the market finished off yesterday. But it's still early in the day if you're getting into the market as we speak. 122 transactions yet. That tells you, of course, that tells you that we've seen this consistent uh, decline in, in the equity space. But again, a lot of trading activities still going on. But the big picture, uh, as you said, Temple is about what are the global issues that are impacting on our market. Are you the GFO, the CEO at uh, Alpha Invest Securities? Good morning. It's good to have you. Good morning. Thank you, and come be here. Thank you very much. Hope you like the studio. Yeah, very interesting and very um, up to date. Yeah. We appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Congrats. Yes, that's a nice one. Yeah, congratulations. Okay. So, um, what key global macroeconomic issues do you think we face? We also to always talk about the political environment, the political risk. Yes, we know we're in the season. Every four years, we go through it. But do you think there are strong issues from outside our shores that are impacting this market? Yes, um, even starting from what we've seen um, from the, the U.S., the Fed has, for this year alone, has increased the rate twice. And there's still also the expectation that it will also um, be increased um, twice before the end of the year. So when you see higher yield in developed markets, um, that would also, uh, for most investors, will move their investment to some of those um, developed markets that have more stable policy and as well as in terms of stability in terms of, and consistency in terms of policy. And when you also look at within the emerging markets, you see what's going on um, in Turkey. Um, you see um, the, um, the Turkish um, lira, has, uh, I think, has depreciated about 40-something, 40 44% um, year to date against the dollar. And you also, you see the inflation rate has spiked to about 17.9%. And you also look at the come to Argentina, you see uh, what's re really going on. Their currency have also been uh, has depreciated significantly. Um, the, the CBN, uh, that's their central bank, had to even raise the benchmark rate to as high as 60% is very massive. So um, it's like a contagion effect. So when you see um, the way it's structured, there are a lot of um, exchange-traded funds that, are, that trade most of these indices. So especially when you look at the way Nigeria belongs to the frontier market, right? But you look at the emerging markets. Uh, so for most times when they are trying to reduce the exposure to this market, um, Nigeria stocks classified under um, the frontier market will also be impacted, so they can't even isolate. So beyond the fundamentals of some of those companies, so once there's um, an instruction either from their risk person to, okay, reduce by 0.1, 0.5% to this particular region, it affects Nigeria. And just to wrap that up, yes. you see that most of the stocks that have been declining are stocks that have very strong fundamentals, which are the most uh, patronized uh, by foreign investors. Okay, so when we say investment flows, uh, and investors are looking for, uh, the question is, what are they looking for when they say, look, uh, I'm sitting in London, I'm sitting in, 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 in Dubai, whatever, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, I want to invest in the US, I want to invest in the Nigerian market. What, are the, what does investors look for in terms of their risks, in terms of return they're looking for? Why do they consider what market Nigeria inclusive as a frontier market? Yeah, I think um, what they look for, liquidity, they also look for in terms of the depth of the market. But beyond that, on a macro level, they try to see in terms of consistency, policy consistency. They try to see in terms of um, how to repatriate in and out of their funds. You would recall that it's after the setup of the investors and exporters window that we received significant interest in, in Nigeria. So those are some of those factors that they would consider at their at their hand. Uh, but um, the, uh, the political space, it's, as, as also, it's also not helping the situation because perception um, is also very key in some of the issues that were development that we've seen recently um, in the likes of um, the 
the MTN saga that's still ongoing. And when you look at it, the capital, um, the CCI, is the major, um, the major um, part of the conversation. Part of the, yes. Yeah, the major yes. part of what they use in terms of influencing their fund or when they want to take out, repatriate their funds, mm. uh, to be precise. Mm. So when this is being questioned, so I'm not, well, this is still, I'm not either um, speaking for MTN or mm. speaking for the government, mm. but in terms of the way I think this is being handled, in terms of perception for foreign direct investment, mm. that would tell a lot. We know we've been seeing a lot of foreign portfolio investments, but, uh, and so most of them have been reducing the exposure as we move towards election. But with this current development, the last two weeks, mm. some of them have begun to look at what are their current position, I hope I won't be the next. They are trying to force out any further inflow and to reassess their current position to be sure that um, they are not caught with it. But, the but, but again, if we look at these issues, I, I'm not too sure, unless there's something new, uh, and without really taking all our time into the, uh, into the MTN, when it comes to foreign exchange transactions, I'm sure these are laws not made overnight. We all know that. Those yes, FX yes. laws are not made overnight. Exactly. They are not laws that you wake up and you go to um, a restaurant and just say, this is what you have on the menu. So it's always there. So if you work in a market, if you invest in a market, you know what the rules are. Yes. And you know what, the, most likely you know what the penalties also yes, are. Exactly. So it's very clear. So it's been there a year, two years, so you have an idea. So if you want to operate as a foreign investor within any market, you know what the rules are. If there's one single exchange rate, you know there's a single window. If there are four, if there are five, you know. So you play within the, the space. Right. That's what the foreign investors look for. But again, going back to the issue of the externalities that we face here, do you think we're under pressure right now? For example, if we switch to the discussion around Eurobond, uh, do you think this is still a good time for us if you look at the strength of the dollar, all the rhetoric from Washington about global trade, and the QE that the uh, European Central Bank is also slowing down in terms of its own asset buying program? Do you think all of this would make it impossible for us to access that market, $2.8 billion on our calendar for this year, do you think we're still good to go? No, I think um, it's not impossible for us to assess the market. It's, the, it's just going to be more expensive compared to um, previous issues. The appetite so, of this administration is not to borrow high. Y yes, <laughs> yes, but when you also consider, even you consider it to domestic rates, mm. you see what's been going on within, yes. uh, rates have been on the increase within domestic rates. So yes. when you now compare the cost of borrowing within yeah, and do, uh, domestically and you compare it to when you go abroad, so those are some of those things that they would also consider. So when they see the cost of borrowing, uh, doing, raising foreign loans, mm. even if it's coming at two, three percent uh, premium, mm. but in terms of the timing, um, because of the political risk that is being amplified, that will come at a, a, a more significant country risk premium that will mm. be considered if they actually. So if we approach the market it. as we originally planned in September, we haven't heard anything yet from the death office whether this will still go on. Again, you need a few approvals. The legislatures are still on holiday. They're not yet back fully until September 25. I mean, the recess at the National Assembly. So if the DMO is still going on, you think there's a political risk that is higher, dollar is much stronger than, yes. <laughs> than, than last year, and rates are also high, globally speaking. So that puts us in a tight corner, isn't it? Yeah, I don't see um, that just based on my uh, own view. I don't see the government DMO coming up with that this, still this month. Mm. We're already in September. Mm. And um, like you said, the National Assembly um, are still um, well, on, recess. on mm. recess. And um, there are a lot of processes that have to be involved. They need to also go for um, the roadshow to also sensitize uh, the market and also get a feeling of what rates they would like to mm. to come in so something like a big book building mm. would also be done so i don't see september may not be very visible but we may still be looking at how things play out before the end of the year if the policy doesn't get more heated such that in terms of um, the cost of raising the fund um, foreign um, loans may be more expensive then i feel they may and um, the government may decide to wait till mm. after um, election and consider maybe just staying with its local borrowings, local bond market. borrowings. but yeah. that will put more pressure mm. in terms of um, the rates of local borrowings because by the time you factor in also election spendings, mm. the implementation of the budget in terms of spending budget um, 
uh, from uh, implementing the budget. By the time you look at some, bring all those things together, yeah. it's going to put more pressure on the CBN in terms of its OMO bulk rate, and that would increase the, uh, the, the stop rates, which, um, like, it's, uh, it's also going to crowd out the private sector because most people prefer to buy the bills, mm -hmm. lock it down, mm -hmm. Than mm -hmm. invest because by the time you are getting as high as um, if you ask me, if I have the window, if you are paying, I don't mind taking the money from you. You're the one yeah. paying. Uh, if the heritage is higher, it is, it's, you just wet my beak. But we've been through this cycle before, and we'll always come through it. What do you think we can do to grow our own market in a, in such a manner that when these emerging markets or maybe the next round of of meltdown, whatever it is, shake up will come from the developed markets, we, we never can tell. Uh, or it's going to be from the frontier markets as well. What can we do to grow this market beyond all the time, depending on FPIs uh, to be the big boys in, in, the, in this space? Yeah, I think um, the first thing that we we'll, we'll just continue to do is investor education. Uh, because um, investors need to understand the cycle of how the market works. Also, I need to understand that it's meant for long-term um, investments and not short-term like money market instruments. Beyond that, we also need to, um, in terms of the products, I know that the NSA have been working on the features, the options, find that the ETF is already existing, but also a lot of investors really don't understand how this works. Uh, they, they, we can't rule out uh, the, what, uh, the effect or the impact that PENCOM can also play in this. Yeah, because they have long-term funds, the PFAs, they have long-term funds. They can also be able to identify stocks that have strong fundamentals and support. Um, um, yeah, I wouldn't say use our money to support, but they can also invest more. But that will not be possible uh, until we see the rates for on fixed income instruments come down. Because as long as we continue to have very attractive fixed income rates, then the equities market will continue, to, domestically will continue to suffer for it because you have risk-free investment, government bills, without any risk, you have guaranteed return. You have a 12, when you, you look have a 12.5%, 12.9%. The, the true yield, by the time you factor I'm looking in, at I'm the looking stock market down by almost the same margin yet to date. Yeah, so you... Hold you on a second. I know what to do. I have a very great idea what to do if, 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 I'm, if I'm doing the market. So that's, yes. that's, that's part of um, the, the challenge that we continue we, we to, to we suffer now. But mm. investor education is also key so that even when we have a lot of retail players in this market, we grow our online trading okay. platform that individual you can buy and sell even on your own. And you have some, um, some um, updates that can help you Take you decision of your reading that market. you can also build for you to be able to send play invest, this sending, sending investors back to school. But it's okay. Education, yeah. education. You can never overdo education. Investors education. Thank you very much. Ayodeji Ebo, who is the managing director and CEO at Afro Invest Securities Temple. Back to you, Hadi Headquarters Studios. So I see you sending investors back to school. That's wonderful and very interesting, actually. But of course, with rates being high, we need a bit more of uh, that investors education uh, in the markets in the Nigerian uh, system here, uh, basically. Well, after this break, we'll be back again with more on buying and selling, especially with trading going on right now at the exchange. <laughs>